Hello everyone and welcome to the EGF. It is Super Smash Brothers Tuesday here. We have got some ultimate action and first up on the docket is Niagara versus DePaul. Uh, I am Joe Soyson or aka Soy Sauce and joining me at the desk is Dara. Dara, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good friend. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, yeah, we're gonna be seeing Niagara University going up against DePaul. Guys, once again, you're watching EGFC Season 2. So, for those of you guys that aren't particularly initiated quite yet, um, this is essentially just a series of colleges going up against each other in a modified crew battle format. And what this modified crew battle format consists of um, is going to be head-to-head -head players, but instead of just them playing out one game and the winner moving on, it's going to be a head-to-head -head of five teams, uh, and each head-to-head -head is going to play out a best of three. Uh, and so for each game that is won, uh, the winner will take one point for each stop that they're left with, and if they win a set, they uh, get to take two points for the team, so you can win a maximum of eight stocks, or, I don't know, maybe just like four. Uh, that's, that's the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be really, really exciting. Um, once again, I am not 100% familiar with some of these names. Perhaps you can enlighten me from either Niagara or DePaul. I I do know, uh, I don't remember exactly what both of these players specifically play. We do know that it will be Ikaro versus Fiction uh, going up first in this matchup. Fiction representing Niagara, Ikaro representing DePaul. Uh, in terms of these two schools in general, during the first split, uh, Niagara was kind of up and down. Uh, they had their moments. They ended up uh, at the end of last split going two and six, I believe. Uh, so they're looking to try and get back on the right foot. And DePaul, uh, last week, or they are one of the top teams, I believe, in the Big East. And uh, last week, they played a very short match against Georgetown and looked very solid. So uh, I'm kind of looking for them to, you know, continue that style of play against a, a Niagara team that's really, you know, trying to find their way back on the right track. We'll have to see how that pans out, of course, as I believe the uh, they are looking to get into the match soon here. But that's generally, uh, you know, the matchup going in. I'm, I'm curious to see uh, who these players pick. If I remember correctly, Fiction is the Robin player for Niagara. I, I know Niagara has at least one popular Robin player, but I could be completely wrong about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's them, but I guess we'll just wait and see. And while we do actually have a couple of moments, I guess we can just go about a regularly scheduled reminders. Uh, guys, once again, you're watching EGF. This is a stream brought to you by House of 3000. If you aren't following them already, you should be doing so. They are the premier broadcasting organization in Tri-State in New York. They do so much amazing work for Super Smash Bros. So please go ahead, uh, give them a little follow if you can. They host a Wednesday uh, Wi-Fi weekly as well. Um, and then also, you should be following my lovely co-casting Soy Sargus at uh, SoysonJSport on Twitter.com. And then if you would like, uh, you can also follow me at Delamgaria on Twitter as well. Um, and guys, you should have two things with you. Number one, you should have you should have a bottle of water because we're gonna be in it for the long haul tonight. We're gonna be going to like I don't know, I think like 11 p.m. Some, something along those lines. So make sure like, you're sitting there properly hydrated. And two, you know, you should have a little bit of school spirit. You know, I, I want to see you guys rep and, and support your uh, your schools and teams in the chat. You know, it's it's always sick to to see that. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, as we look to get into this match. Uh you know, between these two teams. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what gets uh, striked first here. We're still waiting to hear the confirmation that we are all good to go here. Uh, but uh, while we wait, let's actually go over a quick glance at our overall schedule, if you have that ready. Uh, Niagara and DePaul is our first match of the day. It was going to be Maris versus Georgetown, but due to some unfortunate circumstances, that match uh, has been swapped out for Niagara DePaul. Later on today, we've got uh, Siena College versus St. John's. And uh, afterwards, we've got Quinnipiac versus Wichita State, and then I've got a blank here on who's next. 
Uh, yeah, it should be Marquette University going up against Manhattan College, and then finally finishing off with uh, Canisius and University of Hawaii. So all familiar names, of course, um, everybody that we saw like last weekend as well as last season. So it's going to be exciting to see how they're able to tune out and how they're able to put on a little bit of a show for us. And now look at that. Oh, thank you so much to <laughs> Devin behind the scenes with this amazing stage striking widget. So they're going to be striking already Final Destination in Smashville. That's usually like everybody's go-to, like to, to ban police. Like almost nobody will immediately default to going to FD because it's like, it's one of those stages that it benefits a handful of characters like absurdly well, you know? Uh, so you always want that level of insurance against those characters. And if you're not banning FD right off the bat, that's, that's, that's so suspicious of you. You know, that's like a huge tell as to uh, who you're gonna play. I always feel like uh, Final Destination, because there's no platforms, it's just a very volatile stage. The rich get richer. You know, if you can keep someone in the air, that's just, you know, practically a death sentence for some characters. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, a, a blatant first ban there. Uh, PS2 still feels like it's going to be the go-to, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll have to see uh, as we're waiting for the follow-up bans. Town and City still on the board along with Battlefield. And Small Battlefield is a counterpick stage, correct? It's not one of the, the first... Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> just making sure of that. Uh, if this is the Robin player that uh, we were thinking of earlier, does Robin tend to like more space or a more compact stage like Battlefield? Sure. Um, well, the real benefit of Battlefield is that Robin is able to sort of control the platforms really well. If I were Robin, I would be opting to go for a stage like Town and City, where I'm able to get a lot of those platform extensions. Uh, I'm able to combo off of other quite really easily, uh, and I'm, you know, just able to really just like pile on a lot of damage while still being able to keep my space. Uh, so, to me, it seems as though it's going to be more favored towards Town and City right now. Battlefield, again, it's not even a bad stage for Robin. Uh, what Robin really does not like, obviously, is going to be stages with very little space, where a lot of characters can just sort of be you know, um, you know, be up and go in space, you know? Uh, not really give her the freedom that she wants, not really give her the uh, space that she wants to be able to set up projectiles, to be able to play a good keep away game. Uh, so, you know, the instant ban from Smash World that had to have been from, uh, from Fiction. And uh, as we await here, you know, the PS2 ban coming through, so we will not be going to what feels like the yeah. start, the typical starter stage. Uh, Battlefield or Town and City still on the board, still waiting to see. Uh, two different kind of formations of triplats there, and uh, it's it's, yeah. it's like difficult to like sort of contextualize like Town and City as uh, a triplat, just simply because it doesn't it doesn't have like that same kind of pressure at landing in the center stage, and it sort of allows you to get jump ins on the corners. While Battlefield, because of the way that the platforms are positioned, of course, being low, it's going to be much more difficult for you to jump in somebody sitting in the corner, right? You can't go in with a falling aerial. The positioning of Town and City, though, does allow you to do that, and then it just morphs into the flat stage. So, you know, if you can't opt for the flat stage, then, then Town and City is your next best bet. And it looks like Battlefield is striked, so we will be going to Town and City. Uh, and I think we are just about ready to go. With that, again, this is Fiction versus Ikaro. Fiction representing Niagara University and uh, Ikaro representing DePaul. Uh, again, this is week number two here of the spring split, week number 10 overall. Uh, DePaul looking very strong through the first split. Uh, Niagara trying to get back on track after last week. Uh, they could not get the uh, victory. Actually, last week they had a match postponed. They were supposed to play Fairfield, but that match uh, due to, uh, I believe the weather actually postponed that game with the Arctic blasts that hit last week and are still uh, affecting some schools. Uh, they were unable to play that match. So I believe this is Niagara's first match of 2021. 
<laughs> your, your guess is as good as mine. We'll try and go best to buy yourself a little bit of time. So think about everything that we just said about Robin, about creating space, uh, and throw that all away <laughs> because it is 100% completely irrelevant. Uh, going into game one, we're going to be seeing Fiction going with the Falco, Icario with the Bayonetta. I don't even know how to describe that new killing action that took place, but other than just one of patience. You know, they were just sort of waiting each other, feeling each other out. Uh, you start jumping a little too much against Bayonetta, uh, and she will start calling them out. So, to me, it seems as though it's going to be very difficult in Fiction to get anything started here. Yeah, and you can tell right off the bat, too, because Fiction just cannot find his way in. And right now, Akaro, oh that's a zero to death off the back air. Yeah, I was able to get the up tilt into the back air. Uh, Falco just does not have a lot of really good buttons in that position. Um, but yeah, well, Ikaru just keeps on putting it on. Finally, Fiction getting a little bit of a hit, but that's not going to be the hit of up tilt that he's normally going to be looking for. It's not able to combo off of it quite yet. You can't be jumping against Bayonetta like that. Uh, against her, you know, most characters, you just have to play a complete different way. They're, they're in, you know, Bayonetta's direct vicinity, and they'll blow up for it. It feels like Akaro also has done a very good job of just getting in on Falco, and the second Bayonetta gets in, you know, is one of those, uh, oh wow. my goodness, that was... What? Uh, I, I don't know yeah. how I feel about that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a little bit ridiculous. But right now, the biggest issue that Fiction is jumping so often. Whenever they try to initiate, they're not really respecting Bayonetta's ABK. Um, you know, at all. Uh, nor are they like sort of waiting for the correct moment to like catch the landing, but there it is finally able to get one good hit, the up tilt into the back air. Uh, but that's not going to be it quite yet. It starts to push for a little bit too much, but Ikaru just looks completely on top of it right now. Yeah, and there might be a conversion there. One of the things that I was going to note was that how was Fiction really going to get a kill here on Bayonetta if Bayonetta is able to weave in and out uh, on this shield of Fiction? Can't land the up air, still can't find a kill move. Uh, no, that up air was just, you know, only going to do just a bit of damage. Really good delayed wake up there. That's something a lot of players could be doing a lot better for sure. You don't always have to immediately pick a tech option, especially after you missed one. Uh, you can just wait a little bit, you know, make it as ambiguous as possible. Mix up your timing. That's going to be the witch time into the up smash. And Ikaru already with a really, really clean two stock. Opening up the game with a zero to death. That was just, I mean, that was, that was brutal. Yeah, Akaro looked all over that matchup, and I mean, I honestly thought the guns were about to kill there. That neutral B looked good, and you know, this is one of those things where uh, if Fiction can get in and do some damage, you know, if Falco, we call him one of those cutscene type characters, but that witch time coming through, and I believe that's the first time uh, Ikara used witch time all match. Yeah, it seemed like it, and honestly, the one time that, you know, Ikaru was so confident that Fiction was going to land with the button, it's just going to be continuing to press buttons, uh, was able to find it. You know, the biggest thing about Bayonetta is if you start really telegraphing your approaches and make them way too predictable, she is going to start which timing you for it, and you'll blow up and die, and you'll feel bad because you're at, like, what, 70%. Um, but the biggest thing is Fiction, uh, in the beginning, was really not respecting a lot of Bayonetta space. Uh, and her ABK especially, because that move can be oppressive. So you have to be able to play outside of that range. You have to understand what is basically impenetrable space. Um, and Fiction could just try to focus on catching on some of these special landings a little bit more. Um, and, you know, with, with Bayonetta, it's like there's always that adjustment period, you know, because she's you have to play such a different way against her that uh, there was always like that game where you're like, okay, well, I'm just feeling things out and getting comfortable again. And it almost, to your point, feels like Fiction should play, you know, a little bit more defensively, which is not Falco's play style at all. Falco, I feel like, is one of those characters where you just want to be in the face of your opponent. You want to pressure, you want to get off all those multi-hits. But again, you know, against a character like Bayonetta, who has, you know, such options to, to get in in neutral, it's very awkward for Falco to try and counter that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Falco is just, in general, really struggles to initiate a lot of hits, and that just comes from a lot of his character design. Uh, and that, you know, if it was easy for him to initiate, it'd be, it'd be kind of busted. You know, he doesn't have <laughs> like, too many safe pokes. 
It doesn't have like a lot of particularly safe buttons. Um, or the ones with massive disjoints either. So not having those against Bayonet is going to be really difficult. You just have to sit and shield a lot. You have to play really patiently. Uh, you have to bait out a lot of ABKs, bait out a lot of heel slides, uh, and then try to focus on some out of shield punishes because otherwise, I don't see realistically how Falco can jump in on a character like Bayonetta. Yeah, so we will have to see if Fiction can uh, adjust to the counterplay here because Akara once again, uh, a very strong play. It was good of Fiction to take that last stock too because of the point system, you know, mitigating some of that damage. A three stock would have been a, a, a massive momentum swing, but you know, only two points on the board does not feel like uh, a whole lot right now. Uh, we are waiting to see now where they will go. If you are Fiction, where what is a, the optimal stage to go to? To me, it wouldn't be the stage. To me, it's the biggest thing that, you know, I mean, obviously Falco likes Battlefield, Falco likes Yoshi's, uh, but the biggest thing is just going to be making sure that I can slow the game down a little bit. I can just walk a lot, you know, play out of shield, not overcommit to jumps, not overcommit to dash -ins. Um And then, you know, I think from there we'll have a set. So we're gonna see the immediate bans on Smashville, Final Destination, and Kalos, and there we see the pick to Battlefield. You know, Falco gets an up tilt on a battlefield, he's able to get falling up here, drag down, fall it out. He he can do everything. Right? He has <laughs> he has everything that he needs just to hit you once and take 60% on you and like down. That did not feel fair. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, in this in this game we're gonna definitely be seeing Ikaro play a little bit more evasively, you know. They really don't have any incentive to approach. It's just going to be like a lot of um, like both players sort of standing off a bit until one of them feels like they can commit. One of them feels so confident that they can press a button and uh, get into the time. And with that, it sounds like we are ready to get into the match. Game two here on Battlefield. No character swaps. Fiction, fiction still rocking the Falco, Ikaro, uh, still on the Bayonetta. And like you said, we'll see what adjustments the players make. And immediately, Ikaro going in wow. a quick 40% and some more. Ooh, that was a really good mix-up from Fiction. They made it seem as though they were gonna go for the attack. Ikaro was not ready for it. Gets the platform with the shine. No follow-up though. Double chase with heel slide into down in. What? I that, was, that. I mean, that was silly. <laughs> that was absurd. Ikaro just killed, and now Ikaro has no incentive to approach. Laser didn't even go above Bayonetta for some reason. That hit in the head. Man, th this game is a good Achilles. That down air reached so far and got two hitboxes too. I was actually surprised that you know it was able to clip down first for the spike. Yeah, no, the the impact hitbox is what you always got to be on the lookout for. It's one of the most reliable, well, not reliable, but one of the ways that a lot of bayonetas like to get kills. Um, also, oh my God, this game. I don't know about the slide right now. Mm. Well. I mean, regardless, that was a huge witch time that got whiffed on there. Felt like if that actually happened, Fiction was dead, but Fiction's staying alive so far. Yeah. Lapped in percent. We'll see if he can get a stock here, but he's he's backed into a corner now. So what happened with that interaction is that, you know, obviously you can interact with grounded moves. The up tilt interacted with the up smash. It caused uh, both players to go into the respective rebounds. Uh, so what's a really good thing a lot of Bayonetta's you'll see do uh, after they land witch time and they see that the opponent's still in the animation of another move, they might just decide to jab them, right? Use jab and then press up smash. Uh, because then they would be able to ensure uh, that that kind of situation is not repeated. But right now, Ikaru is sitting very cleanly at three stocks to one. Man, this lag is, is tough. This is, this is difficult. Yeah, and it feels like... Ooh, that was actually a good uh, forwarder to get back to stage from Fiction, but... Oh, there we go. The forward smash is going to be able to take a stock. And again, Fiction able to take a stock off of Ikaro, mitigating some of those points. But it's a matter of can he get another? Can he find a way to fight back in this? Because remember, if Ikaro wins this match, that's a lot of points in the way of DePaul. Yeah, absolutely. Man, this, this is terrible. I mean, I don't understand how you're able to execute anything or get anything started. Double up being too forward to take it. Yes, that's going to be it. Wow. 
I'm gonna be real with you, if I was French, I'd be a little bit tight because that connection was the antithesis of Pog. Uh, that was that was not smooth. That looked a little bit difficult. Uh, so I'm not really sure what the link is gonna be on that. But we got the slow mo combo, you know. Oh my that, gosh, that's the Bayonetta classic. Uh, it, it's it, it is unfortunate to have you know some of those internet issues, but I mean. I, I do commend the the players who who try and battle out. through it because it it's out. it's yeah it, it is not easy you know when you feel like some of those inputs just don't come out and you know, when you can feel the frames it, it it can be no fun to to play in so for for both of these players to fight it out I, I you know I commend them both I commend them they were both stronger people than I <laughs> I would have been quite upset to say the least. Uh, that was that was quite difficult, uh, but yeah, that means Ikago is going to be taking, geez, like six points already right off the bat for Nepal University. That's huge. That's an excellent lead to start. You know, most people they only get like three or four points for their team. No, this is a six-point lead right off the gate. You know, right off the bat. Um, so Niagara is definitely going to have a lot of making up to do already so early on into the game. Um, and again, with this sort of modified crew battle format, it seems as though we more often than not see uh, leads be established on.